Please rise for reading from the Gospel. What then did, did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written. Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. Truly I say to you, among those born of women, there has arisen no one greater than John the Baptist. Yet the one who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I recently heard a phrase that I very much disagree with. I know it was meant to be clever, but I'm not a clever person, so maybe I didn't appreciate it as well as I ought to. But honestly, it really bothered me. It was on a cop show, which I typically don't watch, but I was watching this one. And the cop said to another cop, the guy woke up on the wrong side of the grass. And it took me a second to realize they were talking about someone who's dead. I thought, okay, maybe it's not as clever as I thought it was. Because I kind of disagree. However, there is a great chasm between the side of the grass below and the side of the grass above, and there's no doubt about that. However, what we have to understand is that from the top of the grass to the bottom of the grass, there are many things that must be said and must be done. For example, John the Baptist was one of the greatest prophets, or the greatest prophet, ever to prophesy. From the very beginning, when Christ, or when Mary came to Elizabeth in utero, it was St. John the Baptist that leaped in the womb of his mother. He prophesied from the womb. No other, no other child in utero did that. And yet, it was so important for the gospel writer to say that, that it was literally what happened. John the Baptist knew Christ Jesus through two uterine walls. Think of that just one second. How beautiful that is, that he was, pro he was prophesying long before either of them drew their first breath in, outside in the fresh air. He was prophesying before birth. And once he was born, it was he who went out into the wilderness and came back to prophesy. And what was his prophecy? It's one that we don't particularly want to hear, but it was also one that had to be said. Repent. That was his, that was his uh, evangelical way of speaking. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent, 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 for Christ is coming to you. John the Baptist was making way for Christ Jesus, even as an adult, knowing his cousin would soon be approaching. Now I want you to realize that calling people to repentance is again not something that people like to do. Ecumenicism diminishes to this. Stop being so mean to me. That's why pastors are afraid to call people to repentance. Because they don't want to be seen as mean. Just tell us about the good stuff. 
Tell us about all the beautiful things in Philippians that we want to hear. Tell us about the things of the Jesus that we prefer Jesus to be. Let me further go into that point. We all have an understanding of Jesus and typically he's the Jesus on the shelf. He's the Jesus in the lamp. The Jesus in whom if you ever need him, you just pull him down from the shelf and you put him back on the shelf whenever he has granted your therapeutic prayers. And once you put him back on the shelf, then what? You just take him down when you need him. Then on the other hand, there's the biblical Christ. The one in whose way was carved out by John the Baptist. Now, John the Baptist's cry when he was preparing the way for Christ was absolutely resolute. He knew what he had to do, and so he went and he did it. He stood in front of a lot of people who would prefer to kill him than not because he preached this message. Repent, for the kingdom of God is near. And I preach to you today, borrowing from the sermon notes of St. John the Baptist, that you are to repent. If you do not repent, you shall by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. It's just the way that it is. Repent, lest you perish. And that's how John the Baptist led the way for Christ. He was absolutely resolute in his message. And so, perhaps you could see where St. John is coming from after Christ had come, and there he was sitting in jail. For the very words that he spoke regarding Christ, he's sitting in jail. And you know, saying to himself, I did everything that he wanted me to do. Why am I sitting in prison? Shouldn't I be free? And so John, in weakness, sent his servant out to Christ and asked Christ, are you the one who is to come or shall we be looking for another? I think that if we're honest, and I don't need to see your head shake or raise any of your hands, I think if we're honest, we've asked similar questions. Why in this world are we to continue to suffer? Why is it on the higher part of the grass so difficult? Why, why do we have to toil? Why do we have to hurt? Why do we have to mourn? So St. John sent his servant to go to Christ praying that Christ would send someone to free him. And you know what Christ did? He preached the gospel to the people and John died. Christ did not go to John. Instead, he told John's people simply this. Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. Blessed is the one who is not offended by me. I'm going to say it one more time. Blessed is the one who is not offended by me. That sermon in a sentence was directed right at John. Directly at John. And then he tells John's disciples to stay and listen. 
Watch. Look at all the things that Christ is doing. Has John forgotten that the way that he paved was for the Son of God? The one who was to rescue his people? And so he said, look at all these things that I do. Go back to John and tell him, I am about my father's business. So Jesus let his cousin die. I'm willing to bet that's not the Jesus you had in your head when I mentioned it. There's John on the wrong side of the grass, having done everything God had asked of him. And yet, Jesus turns to his disciples and he says, Behold, I send my messenger before your face who will prepare your way before you. He's talking about John. But then he says this, Truly I say to you, among those born of women, there has arisen no greater prophet than John the Baptist. No greater prophet has ever lived other than John the Baptist. Isaiah, Elijah, all of the Old Testament prophets. No one was a greater prophet than John. No one. John, the cousin of Jesus, when he says, among those born of women, there has arisen no one greater than John the Baptist. And I'll give you the cliff notes here. Everyone is born of a woman, including Jesus. Those are the crib notes. And so what Christ is saying is that everyone, out of everyone who ever lived, John the Baptist is the greatest prophet. And even he is below the grass. Truly I say to you, among those born of women, there has arisen no one greater than John the Baptist. And then he says this, yet one who is the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. The one who is the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than John the Baptist. So maybe, maybe I misheard the cop show because I'm not so sure that there is a wrong side of the grass. In other words, as we rejoice today, we rejoice in the lives that are born and the lives that die. In no way are we to ever diminish someone's pain or someone's hurt or someone who mourns. That's why we get so confused and we get so anxious when we go to a funeral because we don't know what to say. We end up mumbling through our words because we have this mentality of the wrong side of the grass. And so what do we end up saying? They're in a better place. Oh, they look beautiful. Or worse, they look real. I've heard that one myself. Because we don't know what to say is because we have this understanding of the wrong side of the grass. Christ doesn't. Christ understands the quick and the dead. The ones who are alive and the ones who are triumphant. And the ones who are triumphant is greater. The very least of the ones who are in the kingdom of heaven is greater than you. Why? Because Christ has given you the faith. The faith that death cannot touch. The faith in Christ Jesus that can never tarnish. 
The faith, the faith in the crucified and risen Lord. And so, when we talk about those who have passed on in the faith, we talk about it in this sense. What Christ says to you. Comfort, comfort, ye my people. Behold, there is one coming, particularly in this Advent season. There is one coming. Comfort, comfort, you my people. For God has spoken tenderly to you. And cry that you will one day see her warfare ended. And you will cease the battle that you fight now. You will lay down your arms and you will die. I know people in this congregation have all seen death and painful deaths. And I could not imagine it. But I say this. Just as your loved ones lay down their arms, so will you. And you will die. And you will enter into the earth. And you'll be on the right side of the grass. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you.